Hello everybody. What is the major skill that you have to develop in order to survive and thrive in modern society? Well, there's just one skill and that's adaptability. Why? Well, the world is changing at an ever faster pace. ChatGPT should have been a massive wake up call for everybody that we're now entering a new technological age and that means more and more disruption, but it's been happening throughout human history and the progress of humanity or the technological advancement of humanity is increasing at an ever faster rate. That means that for many of us now, we won't just have one career in our lives, we'll have to change multiple times. The life cycles of companies are shortening. The use of technologies is shortening. And that means that we have to be able to do new things at a greater frequency. So the ability to be adaptable to new environments and learn new skills is the most critical skill that all of us must develop, no matter what life stage we're in. So far, so obvious, but here's the problem. A lot of human beings don't like it. They don't like learning new skills. We like to be in our comfort zone. We fear change. Fundamentally, there are two problems, two things you need to overcome in order to be an adaptable person. And that's what we'll talk about in this video. The first is what I just mentioned, a psychological issue, the fear of change, the lack of desire to learn new skills or the lack of confidence to do so. And the second is, well, what skill should I actually be learning? Where should I be focusing my attention? And let's take both of those in turn. I think the first one, the psychological one, should be fairly easy to knock over and resolve. Yes, as human beings, we dislike change, and so we see stuff coming to disrupt us. We obviously have a conjugate, but we also have an inertia. Like, well, I don't really want to go to work all day, then come home and do more studying and learn new skills on the weekend and so on. And what if I'm not good and it's a new thing and I fear the new thing and so on and so forth. And quickly, we're in a very earthing from a negative spiral. But here's the thing. This is just our body's innate laziness. Human beings, actually, most biological creatures are lazy, naturally lazy. It's not a bad thing. In the past, it helped us preserve calories. It means we didn't have to hunt so much for food. So being lazy is not necessarily evolutionary a bad thing. And so many of us have that inbuilt inertia. Better to sit down on the sofa watching television than it is to go and do something else. That's almost evolutionary coded to us to try and save energy. But here's the other thing, we are rational creatures. Way back to ancient philosophy, whether it be Aristotle or Confucius, both of them recognize that human beings as rational animals, if you wish to express your highest potential, your highest intrinsic meaning, it means using your faculties of reasoning. In other words, learning is one of the highest expressions of human meaning, which means that learning new skills actually will give you the greatest tunzaigan and quaila. Even though it may feel like now I don't want to do it, when you actually do it, the process of learning new skills is what gives human beings a lot of meaning. So there shouldn't, although there is that inertia, you should be confident that the minute you do learn new things and put yourself out there, it will be a positive experience. Perhaps a more tricky thing though is, well, what should I be learning? You say I've got to be adaptable. You say I've got to learn new skills, but what should they be? In the past, being very, very deep in a single subject was kind of like jing zhong bi lei, right? If you were an expert in a narrow field, people had to come to you on matters of that field. The problem with that now is first, it's difficult to understand which fields will be relevant in 10, 20, 30 years time. So your knowledge can quickly become obsolete. The second thing is that AI and things like ChatGPT mean that you can spend years and years and years learning the facts of a particular field, but as long as I know the right question, all those facts are at my fingertips as a complete novice in just a few minutes. And so it doesn't offer the same barrier to entry as it did before. Even in professions like, say, surgery, where there's a dexterity or a manual skill available, even then we see the increasing use of robots. So even that is not much of a jing zhong bi lei. So my personal view, and I'm very happy to hear contrary views and debates from all of you, is that more and more in the future, human beings will need to learn multiple skills, be more generalists. If you're just very deep in a single topic, you're what is known as anti-fragile. You're very susceptible to disruption in the new environment. But if you've got multiple spikes, then you're A, less susceptible to disruption, but B, you can really which is creativity, the ability to draw those links. Shakespeare is an example, actually, of someone who had knowledge of a broad range of subjects. He could write comedies and tragedies and historical plays, and he had history and philosophy, and he brought it all together for some of the most amazing creations in the history of the human language. And there are many other examples of great, brilliant thinkers just pulling from lots and lots of different fields of knowledge to create wonderful and original things.
And so that's where I think the future lies for humanity. But there are other advantages it too, as well as just being anti-fragile and being able to Also, it's more interesting, right? It makes you more interesting. And that is also a critical skill for the future, where there's going to be more and more emphasis placed on human-to-human -human interaction, rather than just technical skills, which perhaps, again, machines will be able to master equally well. For example, my brother studied history at university. A lot of people said that that was a silly choice because history is not that useful. But it turns out in the client-facing business that he is in, he can talk about lots of topics that people are pretty interested in and form bonds and relationships with people that then help his business. That's a very practical example of how all knowledge can be used for advantage. So what should you be studying? Well, lots of people like to pick a field, right? Now AI is very hot. Lots of people rush and try and study AI. I don't think you necessarily need to be that tactical. My, adv my advice, as I've said in a previous video, is pick something you're interested in, read it, find other things within that, that you're interested in, go off on tangents and just keep on learning and learning and learning and learning and building out a spider's web of knowledge. What that will help you do is not only be a more interesting person, but it also improves your peripheral vision. The more different fields of knowledge you touch on, the more you'll be able to see incoming disruption and incoming trends. So whatever it is that you're interested in, pick it, pursue it, no matter what it is, and then pick up different threads of thoughts and pursue them too. Before long, you'll find you have a very broad knowledge base. That, even if it achieves nothing else, will make you an interested and interesting person.